there, gang, and welcome to another episode of Displaying Model Behavior, the Earth's mightiest video podcast. And today, I'm going to be telling you all about X-Force. We just had a new cable action figure announced, and that got me thinking about all the different characters you could put in a display to represent the original OG X-Force team. And not only that, it made me want to go back and read some of those comics that brought us to the dance, so to speak. So this video is all about how you can build an amazing X-Force display and also what the story is behind all these characters. So let's talk about them. Gang, if you're enjoying this video and you'd like to help support model behavior, then you can do and get yourself some nice t-shirts while you're at it by clicking the link in the description below for Into the AM, the channel sponsors who have provided me with this beautiful graphic t-shirt along with a whole bunch of other ones as well. And I can tell you, but when it's covering up my otherwise naked torso, it feels so good to the touch. 100% cotton, so smooth, so well formed and fitted. I feel like a million bucks where I'm wearing these. And also, I would still have a million bucks in my pocket if I started and then bought some shirts. Because you know what? They're absolutely bargain priced. You can get three for 60 bucks minus my 10% as well. They're virtually giving them away and they shouldn't do. Because t-shirts like this are worth a high price. Lucky for you though, you don't have to pay it. Going through model behavior, you get all the discounts you could possibly need because you're one of the good brothers. So gang, thank you so much for checking out the AM if you've chosen to do so. If you haven't, you know what? I'm not even mad at you. You do you. And in the meantime, enjoy the rest of the video. So the group of outlaw mutants named X-Force was originally formed from the radicalization of the New Mutants, a group of former students enrolled at the Xavier School for Gifted Youngsters. It is kind of cute or somewhat tragic how the New Mutants were this kind of bright, adolescent version of a new X-Men team, and then eventually just the world itself ended up making them gritty and jaded and far more militant than they ever intended to be. It's a kind of unintentional, really clever storytelling thing. See, this is why I sight read. The New Mutants crossed paths with the cyborg independent soldier known as Cable, for they shared the same enemies in the form of the government-sponsored Freedom Force and the terrorist Mutant Liberation Front. Alright, boom, so there you go, we've got our first action figure, Cable. You know, he's from the future. And Marvel Legends, boom, they nailed Cable with, I think, the Sasquatch wave. Cable, I think that's where he came from. And this is the Rob Liefeld Cable in all his ridiculous guns, pockets, and pouches glory. To be fair, this is the slightly scaled down version of that Cable. But he still looks phenomenal with the little rabbit ear communicator on the side of his head, the glowing eye. The glows on so many characters are now just painted on. It looks so lame when you look back in time and saw they actually sculpted them so much better. And now we've got the new Cable coming out, who is wearing a costume far more reminiscent of the mid-90s, long after he had originally formed X-Force. So if you want to go the OG route, then really this Marvel Legend is the only modern representation I think is available. So you better go get him. Also, Freedom Force and the Mutant Liberation Front. Oh my goodness, what a great, crazy, wacky bunch of characters. Freedom Force, in particular, I love GW Bridge. I think he's a great character and someone who's kind of underrepresented in Marvel. So we just recently got a S.H.I.E.L.D. 3 pack with Nick Fury, Sharon Carter and Dum Dum Dugan. Where's our GW? Hey, I'd love to see a new figure of him, or any figure of him. I don't think we've ever had one before. But him, along with Grizzly and the rest of Freedom Force, yes please, that's the big, thick slice of 90s goodness that I'd love to have on my toy collecting plate. It's a weird analogy. And then there's the Mutant Liberation Front, who are led by Cable's arch nemesis, Strife, who is of course a clone of Cable from the future. Apparently, the Marvel writers were planning to do a little switcheroo and reveal that actually Strife is the original Cable and the original Cable is the clone. And then I'm sure that someone went, nah, you know what, that's a dumb idea. We, we better not do that in the mid-90s with our franchise character. Not a great plan. I'm glad they did though, Ben Riley's awesome. But that's what we have. So we have Strife leading the Mutant Liberation Front and this bunch of jobbers, they look so ridiculous. It looks like Rob Liefeld's mind just emptied itself out on an artist's page. And what's really weird is 
there's something kind of cool about them. And that's something I haven't been able to put my finger on until just recently with Rob Liefeld's art style. Everyone mocks and jokes about Rob Liefeld's art, but it's popular. And I think the reason why is because it looks like a child's drawings, like the, the designs, the proportions, like it looks like what a child would come up with, but it's done with like the talent of a professional artist. Because I, I, I like Rob Liefeld's artwork. I, I, I didn't know until recently why, but I think that's it. It, it looks like an eight-year-old drew these sketches and then a professional artist came over and like went over them and made them comic book worthy. I, I'm, I'm not saying that's exactly what it is, but I think it might be. And honestly, it kind of works. Lord knows it did in the early 90s. He was making bank. So after discussing matters with Dr. Moira McTaggart, Cable took the unattended young mutants under his wing, being based at the ruins of the Xavier School. And speaking of Moira McTaggart, oh my goodness, the Moira McTaggart action figure from the House of X-Wave? Fantastic! I'm not a fan of House of X, but that Moira McTaggart figure? So great! For a civilian looking character, they went all in on her with the great face sculpts, with the glasses, the removable arms, so you can swap out the lab coat. So much work, I feel, went into that figure and it really pays off, so that's a banger. Under Cable's tutelage, the New Mutants experienced unprecedented pain and embraced his extreme and proactive ways to deal with mutant-related incidents, especially against Cable's main adversary, the leader of the Mutant Liberation Front, Strife. Now, we just spoke about Strife and his action figure, the original one from Marvel Legends, oof, that was fetching a mighty high price. We're talking a couple of hundred dollars for a while. It was so hard to come by. Then they made a brand new, beautiful, zhuzhed up version, and the sneaky little buggers over at Hasbro put him in a five pack. So if you want that strife, you're gonna have to buy four other characters as well. But I, I gotta say, it does look terrific. I, I, I kinda want that figure. I'm not gonna buy a five pack for it, but I would be tempted if I was feeling a little froggy, I might want to jump, because it looks great with the beautiful metallic armor, all the spikes, the big regal cape. Strife has a really cool design. We don't really see him so often in the comics anymore, but for those early 90s comics, yeah, he was the big bad, and man, he looked the business. So the transition from New Mutants to X-Force was not a cut and dry one. It's kind of interesting and a bit difficult to track because Cable is introduced to the New Mutants in the New Mutants comics and then it starts to become sort of crossed over where various New Mutants characters get written out, new ones get brought in and X-Force just starts to evolve until finally we have the conclusion of New Mutants and then X-Force number one is released with the X-Force team. That's a bit New Mutants and some new characters as well. So it's a very gradual transformation from plucky, upbeat New Mutants to badass, militant X-Force. And it's kind of fun to chart that journey. So Cable's group of protégés changed drastically when the New Mutants were abducted to Genosha by Cameron Hodge. The team lost Warlock and Wolfsbane. And of course, we do have a very impressive Warlock builder figure. This is the full phalanx. Warlock, as opposed to the more human Warlock. I know they kind of merge, don't they? I'm not a New Mutants expert, okay? But I think that's kind of what happens. So we don't have the more blonde-haired, human-looking Warlock character. I don't know his human name. But if you want the big, crazy, wacky-looking Warlock, then yeah, it'll cost you a few beans, but you can get the Builder figure. And then also, there's Wolfsbane, who finally we're getting an action figure of in her X-Factor gear. And we've been begging, we've been pleading for a Wolf Spain for the longest time. So it's great to finally see that figure, even though eh, the design I'm not too sure about. But yeah, she gets to go in your X Factor team. But for X Force, well, they're not going to go for long without a Wolfie character. So after losing Warlock and Wolf Spain, Richter also left the team as he didn't trust Cable. Subsequently, following the demise of his magnate father, Sunspot left with the mysterious Gideon. In between these changes, Cable invited his former ally Domino to help him guide the youngsters, even though the only ones left were the loyal Cannonball and the undisciplined Boom Boom. All right, we've got a whole bunch of characters to talk about here. First of all, you got Sunspot, and he's wearing the gear that he wore later in the 90s, but it's still good to have Robert DaCosta 
represented in some form or fashion, even if it is a later iteration of his look. Then we got Richter. Actually, you know what? We got Richter, Domino, and Cannonball, all in one three-pack. Of course, if we're going to talk about Cannonball, there was the OG Cannonball with no legs, just the blasting effect, which people were not cool with. And I get that. If you don't like characters who come with angry faces and nothing else, try having one who's mid-blast and try putting him in a standing stoic team photo type pose. That ain't gonna work. But Marvel did correct that with the three-pack, giving him legs, along with Domino, who I later found out isn't Domino at all. She's a character called Copycat, who, as her name might imply, copies people. So that is Domino, but it's not Domino. And then you got Richter as well, and I had no idea who Richter was, but I kind of liked his action figure. So that's a whole bunch of characters covered right there. And then we got Boom Boom as well. And this is classic X-Force Boom Boom. And I really do like the figure with the swirly whirly bespoke plasma bomb power effect. That looks really cool. The bright popping pink costume, the green glasses. I really dig her. During this time, they learned that the evil Mr. Tolliver wished to punish Cable, having the mercenary Deadpool target him and his group. And then you got the Merc with the Mouth Deadpool, and honestly, take your pick. Doesn't even have to be Marvel Legends, Mezco, Mafex, Revoltech, you name it. There's a Deadpool figure out there. Of course, the Deadpool figure du jour right now is the Hydra Bob 2-pack Deadpool, which is getting all the good press. And honestly, I can understand why. On the Renew Your Vow Spider-Man body with the mwah, beautiful toe articulation, he probably is the definitive Deadpool from Marvel Legends. For now. Moreover, unbeknownst to Cable, Domino had been in fact replaced by the shapeshift of Vanessa under Tolliver's orders. <laughs> well, <laughs> we knew that. Told you about that two minutes ago. The team was apparently falling apart, but unexpectedly countered with new additions. They took in a vengeful James Proudstar, who accepted to join Cable's operation as Warpath after witnessing his ancestral home defiled by the Hellfire Club. So yeah, we got a single release Warpath figure, and hey look, he's a big, chunky boy. They did this character justice. He's meant to be the brute muscle of the team, and the Marvel legend, yeah, catch captures it perfectly. He's got a very stoic kind of face, but it's not blank. He looks kind of kind of mean, but also noble. I like that. But really the big selling point for him is just the fact that he's jacked, baby. <laughs> he's friggin' jacked. So you can put him, you know, at the back of the team, just backing them up, looking like a badass. War Warpath's a lot of fun. I like him. And they also recruited the deadly warrior from Mojo World named Shatterstar, who happened upon them in their training site, the Danger Room. And finally, the erratic Feral, who sought for protection from Mask and his radical sewer dweller, Morlocks. Okay, so Shatterstar, we do have the action figure of him. Came out quite a few years ago, though, so it wouldn't surprise me if we got an upgrade, because we recently got a new Mojo, and a, a Longshot, and a Dazzler. So a new Shatterstar, that wouldn't be shocking. But the current one they have, he's perfectly adequate. He's got his ridiculous double-bladed swords, because that's such a 90s kind of thing. It's like, what's more badass than a sword with one blade? A sword with two blades? Doesn't that reduce its cutting ability? Shh, doesn't matter. It's badass. So yeah, uh, it's kind of a fun figure. So it's at this point that Cable decides that the Xavier School is no longer a safe place to be holed up in. I mean, to be fair, that school seems to get destroyed and demolished every six months. So yeah, <laughs> that does make sense. So they leave the Xavier School, and this is the point where the New Mutants name is officially done. Cable drops that, and with the new members and the new direction, they rebrand themselves as X-Force. Where the other X-Teams believed in protecting humans from evil mutants, X-Force adopted a proactive and harsh attitude towards mutant terrorists. Their first mission was to directly strike the Mutant Liberation Front. Their brutal ways put S.H.I.E.L.D. agent G.W. Bridge on their track. X-Force initially hid at the abandoned anti-mutant Sentinel headquarters. That's pretty cool, actually. I, I like the idea that the mutants are actually hiding out in an abandoned Sentinel headquarters. It's very much like, what's the last place they would look for us type of approach. And, oh, did someone say Sentinel? Oh, yeah. Boom. The Haslab Sentinel. Ah, my giddy lord. Apparently, you know, the whole point with Haslabs is they ain't gonna re-release them or redo them. So we can't hope to get another one like this. But I tell you what I'd love to see? 
Marvel vs. Capcom Sentinel. Oh my goodness! We've just got Marvel vs. Capcom Cable, so why not give us a deluxe, big, chunky Marvel vs. Capcom Sentinel? Oh my goodness, that would be incredible. You could put him in a two-pack, because I know, I know you love doing two-packs and making us buy figures we don't particularly want. Put a Bolivar Trask in there with him. That would be great! Yeah, that's a little bit of wish fulfillment on my part, but man, I'd love to see it. Soon after, the criminals Black Tom and the Juggernaut took Sunspot and Gideon hostage and attempted to destroy the World Trade Center Twin Towers in New York. Black Tom and the Juggernaut? That's a great villain tag team right there. And we got the Marvel Legends to represent them. The Black Tom one? Ugh, that's a... Uh, no, that's not fair. It, it's basic, all right? It's basic, it's bare bones. I'll, I'll leave it at that. But at least we got one. But then Juggernaut. Ho oh, ho! Yeah, they did Juggernaut justice. Two different flavors of Juggernaut at the moment. You got the Builder figure one, which I prefer with the darker colors, more of a gritty kind of take. And then you got the bright, popping, uh, Colossus 2-pack one. I was trying to think, where did it come from? Yeah, it was the Colossus 2-pack with the very animated colour scheme. I dig that. Personally, I think my favourite Juggernaut will always be the Select Juggernaut. That's just, oh, it's just... It's so good. It's a brick! But it's a wicked looking brick. The Gracious Siren wished to stop Juggernaut and Black Tom and joined Cable and X-Force to do it. With Spider-Man's assistance, X-Force brutally put the terrorists down, but having done that, Deadpool was then able to capture them. So Siren, yes, I think that is the final piece of the puzzle right there. We've got a Siren figure, came out a couple of years ago. Only problem with that figure is that she just has the one face and it's a plain closed mouth expression. What Siren's power? Screaming. I mean, what's her name? A Siren. What does she not do in the action figure form? Scream. Come on, guys. That's a no-brainer. I'm sure we'll see another Siren down the road who is actually demonstrating her powers. But hey, even though the face isn't animated, it's a very nice looking face. So we got that at least. And then of course, I mentioned Spider-Man helping out the team. Hey, he helped out the team in more ways than one, considering that in the early 90s, you want to bolster some sales? Throw Spider-Man in there. But it means we got to see Spider-Man drone... Drone? <laughs> I'm not going to edit that. We get to see Spider-Man drawn by Rob Liefeld. And that in itself is kind of a fun little curiosity. And as for Spider-Man figures, yeah, take your pick, man. <laughs> You've got plenty to choose from. In the aftermath of all this, GW Bridge tried to arrest X-Force, but the mutants escaped. However, Gideon blamed X-Force for the incident, reinforcing their reputation as terrorists. Damn it, Gideon, could you... could you just not? You haven't even got an action figure! Get to the back of the line. Wishing for revenge against X-Force, Mask's Morlocks formed an alliance with Toad's Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. The Brotherhood surprised X-Force in their base, and during the fight between the two groups, Cannonball was mortally wounded by Sauron. <laughs> okay, we've got a whole lot to unpack here now, because a new Brotherhood of Mutants! Yes, with a whole bunch of characters that do have action figure representation. That's the word I was looking for. So we got Toad, who was recently remade as a 20th anniversary action figure, which really kind of stuck in my craw, because those 20th anniversary figures went for 35 bucks a piece, which I don't have a problem spending when you get that bang for your buck. And that Toad was, I felt, a very basic action figure that they were charging almost double the price for. So I had to say like, yo, I'm out. Nonetheless though, he, he does look good. Then you got the Blob, who is just fantastic. The deluxe Blob, I love him. Wonderful. In fact, almost annoyingly good, because receiving him as a very generous gift then made me go, ah, oh, dang it, I, I, I gotta buy all the Brotherhood figures now, because because this guy needs his mates with him, because he's so good, he justifies all the other ones. Luckily, there's one guy I'm happy to add to the collection, and that's Pyro. This figure came out in a two-pack with Rogue, and I think he's one of the most underrated, or just not really spoken about Marvel Legends, because he's great! So bright and colourful, different heads. You throw in some bespoke flame effects, and oh my goodness, Pyro. Pyro's freaking awesome. Love this dude. And speaking of freaking awesome, the Sauron Builder figure. Oh my god, <laughs> the hits keep on coming. Doing a video like this reminds me why I love Marvel Legends so much. We got so many random characters and so many of them are just done so much justice. Fantastic work, guys. The Sauron Builder figure, I'll say it, mwah, chef's kiss. Just glorious, glorious stuff. 
So after Cannonball was mortally wounded, Cable responded with lethal force, while Shatterstar finished Mask. Cannonball miraculously survived, and Cable displayed Mask's lifeless body to the other Morlocks as a warning for them not to mess with X-Force. <laughs> you see, that's what happens when the good guys play by bad guy rules. I'm fine with that. This, this whole story here is the perfect example of F around and find out. Guess what? Mask effed around with Cable, and they found out. And folks, that does it for my recap of X-Force, and which figures you can get to tell the story that initially kicks off the team, I suppose, and also wraps up the New Mutants. What I really did enjoy was just going back and getting this big slice of 90s goodness. It even gave me a better understanding as to the appeal of Rob Liefeld. I'm not sure if my understanding is a correct one, but it's a theory. So gang, what do you think of X-Force? What do you think of these character designs? And what characters do you want to see represented in upcoming action figure form? And also, if you're a YouTube channel member, a little plug ski here, then if you are a member, then send me a message on my socials asking me what team or character or history you want to hear about, because I want to give back to the channel members more. So if you have a recommendation for an As Told By Toys that you'd like to hear, hit me up or comment below, let me know, and I'll see if I can do that for you. And if you want to doubly support the channel and get yourself a badass t-shirt, you can do by visiting the channel sponsors into the AM. Buy yourself a couple of badass graphic design tees and that will help support model behavior as well and it'll keep you looking like a badass. So gang, thank you so much for watching and until next time, keep displaying model behavior. They took in a vengeful James Proudstar who accepted to who accepted to who accepted to who accepted Cable's offer to join them, who accepted Cable's offer to join them as Warpath, who accepted to join Cable's opera, who accepted to join Cable's operation.